Good morning from Abbey Simbel. We had to wake up at 3:15 this morning, and we were picked up at our accommodation at 3:45. At which point, we were escorted to a boat that took us across the Nile River, where there was a bus waiting for us, and the bus driver drove three hours, and now we're here. Yep, uh, the queue for tickets wasn't deep, but it was unnecessarily long. Not sure exactly why it took so long for us to get a ticket, but the key thing was we're here. It cost 415 Egyptian pounds, which I think is about $18 each Canadian. And now we're on the site, looking forward to going into the temples. to yesterday when the high dam was built between the 1960s and 1970s its original purpose was to control flooding however the building of it had an unexpected consequence which was that it actually raised the water levels of Lake Nasser which was going to engulf a ton of very historic sites including Philae Temple and where we are right now at Abu Simbel. Therefore, the two temples at Abu Simbel actually had to be moved. So what you're looking at behind me is the lake and had they not been moved, they would have been underwater here. Abu Simbel archaeological site is comprised of two temples. They were built by Pharaoh Ramses II. And on the temple that we just went into, you will see four huge figures, one which is kind of destroyed, of Pharaoh Ramses II. And at his feet, you'll see his wife, Queen Nefteri, as well as his children. In terms of who Ramses II was, he's also referred to as Ramses the Great, or also in other languages, Ozymandias. And he is widely regarded as one of the most famous pharaohs because he oversaw what many refer to as one of the golden ages of the Egyptian empire. When you go into that great temple, which does have four different statues of him, seems a bit vain, but there we go, then it depicts scenes from the Battle of Kadesh, which was one of the largest battles that was taken on by the Egyptian empire where they overcame the Hittites. Now let's go see the second temple. This is the small temple, which is dedicated to the goddess Hathor, who seems to have multiple jobs, but mostly including music and dance and love, and also to Ramesses II's wife, Nefertari. And it seems like it's only the second time in Egyptian history that a pharaoh dedicated a temple to his wife, so that's pretty special. Some people are just happy with flowers, you know? <laughs> I'd be happy with flowers for the record, babe. Thank God for that. <laughs> 
You don't need to build me a whole temple. No. I mean, you could. Not even a temple. Like, a little cottage would be cool, too. I'd be down for that. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Other than that, though, I just want to remark on the hieroglyphics in both temples. It's just wild how well-preserved they are. Yeah, honestly, I've been so excited to come here. I probably have been looking forward to this moment for about 25 years, and I'm not disappointed at all. The statues on the outside of each of the temples is incredible, but again, like, I'm absolutely blown away by just how well the inscriptions have held the have stood the test of time. Yeah, they are so detailed, and I wish we could just understand what every single story they're telling means, because the walls and sometimes the ceilings are absolutely plastered in them. So the amount of history or stories or things we could learn about their culture or daily life, I mean, there's just so much information that could be gleaned if you had time to go through and understand every single hieroglyphic. It is amazing written history. It's times like this where I just want to give everything up and become an Egyptologist. You know? uh -huh. And then the other thing, again, that is mind-blowing to me is just how old they are. My mind cannot comprehend that length of time. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing so many things that have been sort of around the 2000 plus year mark. And so like even that is just an unfathomable period of time. But this is just so much older than even that. Yeah, it's nuts. After a very early start to the day, we got back from our tour of Abu Simbel at about 2.30. So a good 11 hours later and we have now had another one of our makeshift lunches not very healthy it's like chips and some biscoff cookies yeah. all the food on the tour today was crazy expensive because whenever you stopped at a rest stop or even at the site there are some shops there it seemed like everything you bought was 50 egyptian pounds like you wanted mango juice, 50 Egyptian pounds. You want Biscoff cookies, 50 pounds. Distinctly average coffee, 15 pounds as well. And I think the only thing that was even vaguely reasonably priced was, well, water, which should always be. So yeah, that, that was, was something. That was 10 Egyptian pounds. Yeah. So thank goodness for that. I mean, this was on us. We should have prepared. Yeah. And bought stuff from the store to take with us. But hindsight's always 20 20. But I think all in all, like, obviously we got up painfully early. Obviously we ended up traveling a lot. It was about a six hour round trip all in all, but it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is something that if you're coming to Egypt, should 100% be on your list of things to do. And I think I even saw that they have an airport in Abu Simbel, so if you weren't interested in doing Aswan, which I would still recommend doing, yeah. there's definitely an airport and presumably hotels there too, so you could also just, instead of doing a day trip, maybe go there if you wanted to. If you're going to be building out an Egyptian itinerary, then this should absolutely be on your list, because it was just magnificent. I've been really, really excited to go for a really long time and it did not disappoint at all and I just want to wax the record about it pretty much all the time now. so <laughs> there we go. Lucky me tonight. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think that's pretty much it from us for today. We're just going to settle in and enjoy the afternoon and evening off. Absolutely, but we are going to be checking out and leaving Aswan tomorrow with a view to taking our first Egyptian train. So we'll take you along with us on the train from here to Luxor, which is where we're going next. Mm -hmm.